Hello YouTube newsletter and Tudor subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com and today is December 7th, 2019. This is a special report for Bonnie and uh, Dina, I'm getting to yours. Just finished up the uh, a special featured article for uh, Bonnie asking really good questions and so I wanted to get this out and help you guys at the same time. You know, do kind of a special report like I do with the Black Star over the Black Star channel. And many of you should find this very interesting. And let me just say right off the bat, don't get mad at me. So I'm going to mention people's names, but I am talking about their work. I'm not talking about their person. These, uh, Dave Hodges, Common Sense Show guy. Been watching his videos for years. Great. You see his... Information is in my newsletters almost every week. Bonnie send, sends it in. He's really good on a lot of topics. I'm not criticizing Dave. We're talking about some of his views, along with Steve Quayle's views. You know, I've talked to Steve Quayle on the phone. Seems like a really, really nice guy. Especially when you get into Scripture. When you get interpreta interpreting the science related to the Black Star, and you get interpreting Scripture, then we're going to have places where we agree and places where we disagree. The scripture says there must be factions among you so that those who are approved may become evident among you. And that's what the deal is. They give theirs, I give mine. You have opposing views? Share them right here in the, in the, um, the comments section. If you're a YouTuber, write me. If you're a newsletter subscriber, right? A tutor subscriber, you can bring it up in chat. We're going to be there this Tuesday in the chat room discussing, you know, whatever you guys want to bring up. We're talking about the two Gospels, the two churches. That's where I really want to direct the traffic to. But, for right now, um, this is newsletter number two. It's coming together. This week it's going to be about the two churches. This is what I wanted to show you. This is special stuff right here. John, uh, has he and I have known each other for, well, since Terrell's research group back in 2011, 2012. And this Awakened Radio series, this is the first one that I did. John recorded it, and he edited it, and he's uploading it to a channel and giving me the links. So he's he's got like 30-something shows from the one-year series that I did with Donna Devane over at Awakened Radio. So special treat, special, special treat for you guys. And you'll see they're going to be in order. This is the first one. Oh, two, three, four. This radio section is going to keep growing. And at the end of the uh, of the newsletter, this is where John wrote me. This, his his uh, pal talk name was this John back a long time ago. And he's he's uh, a newsletter subscriber, a Black Star newsletter subscriber as Jonathan. And didn't put the, I never put it together. He stayed uh, pretty quiet. He used to meet me over at uh, Revolution Radio when I was doing radio shows over there. This is what we want to talk about today, on December 7, 2019. The singularity problem is applied to God and Satan. Check four to five minutes in. And uh, let me pull that up for you right over here. And this is the video that she's talking about. Let my ram catch up a little bit. And I've listened to this a couple times. And it seems like, uh, maybe I'll let you listen to it a little bit. It seems like about three minutes, three minutes is where, uh, Dave gets into this. Let me li let you listen to him for a minute. You know, just a little bit here so you get some context of what we're, what we're talking about. Well, let's talk about singularity. The singularity is based on this. There's duality right now. There's man and there's machine. There's carbon and there's silicone. And they're coming together. And eventually, you won't be able to distinguish one from the other. And the benefit is non-sentient life becomes sentient. We're seeing that now with the programming of AI. And mortality becomes virtual immortality. You say, okay, let me just, don't want to get it too far. Then you won't realize what I'm making commentary about. The... Uh, He's getting into transhumanism. That's a Steve Quayle topic. That's what their conferences are about. And you can, I mean, here's uh, Steve Quayle, transhumanism, 
H hybrids 2018 and you can click on the link and you know I was listening to some of what Steve had to say on his topic really would rather find you some text to be able to share to give you more background but we're talking about the 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 way that they're going to de define transhumanism is a little different than what you're going to find at wiki and, and people tend to do that I've, I've heard this before Ken one of the survival group guys he's been writing to me about scripture since 2011 or 2012 and he talks about this dualism and versus the singularity Ken talks about the dualism versus uh, What's the phrase that he used? It's a mystic word, Gnosticism. For some, because I I, pre, I teach and preach on the mystery, our gospels according to the revelation of the mystery, our body of Christ, our mystery church, our mystery. These are things hidden in God revealed. Look up the word mysterion, and then you see that there's a time and a place for things to be revealed. Well, for some reason, some people want to attach the tag of being a Gnostic to me. God showed me these things a long time ago. They haven't shown it to others yet. Maybe he hasn't shown it to Ken yet. So that makes me a Gnostic, you see. So this is a little bit of background information. The difference and where we're going to disagree right here, it, number one, there is no singularity problem. There, there's always a problem if you misdefine terms and you misapply terms and misuse them in phrases and, and you get carried away by this trans humanism hybrid movement um, chanting and mantras and things like that um, so I'm going to just try to touch on what Dave's talking about here he's talking about carbon based life forms and silicon based life forms that's not even what he's really talking about here what he's talking about is human beings versus machines so rather than calling them silicon based if you understand what a silicon-based life form is, then you realize that AI is not a silicon-based life form. AI is a machine. It is uh, made of metal. <laughs> it's like a vacuum cleaner, but it has silicon chips in it. Silicon-based chips, yeah, but that doesn't make it a silicon-based life form. So there's a, mis there's a misunderstanding there. That's the beginning of the problem. Because there are indeed silicon based life forms in the cosmos that are out there. And it's my view, can, it's unsubstantiated. I'm just telling you the way that I feel and sense things. The, the AI that is running the Denver operation, that's running the Underground Arc City program, the one that, that uses the HARP, digital based, space based HARP, digitized system to communicate with the nanos in your body. That is not AI made by man. It's not a machine. It is an actual silicon-based life form given to the House of Rothschild by the sons from space. I know that sounds crazy, doesn't it? But whenever you go in over here and you start um, going through the Steve's Quail th stuff, you're going to see that th this stuff is way out there too. Whenever you get go out into beyond, then you're going to see that the truth is stranger than fiction. It really is. It's stranger than fiction. There are many, many things, even things in the mystery explained that aren't said, that aren't spoken because you would think me out of my cotton picking mind. The truth is stranger than fiction. It really is. Stranger than fiction. So, love Dave to death. We're just going to disagree on a few points. Okay. So, for him, there's a singularity problem. And he is associating that with dualism, with man versus machine. Okay, and then some people are going to take the, the transhumanism to in hybrids. But what I like to do is use the definition. So everything's defined here in this newsletter. The, the reason that we're going to, we began with the two Gospels of the New Testament, and now we're going to the two churches. The reason that we do that is to build a foundation to remove semantics. So when I'm saying gospel, when I say gospel, you guys are thinking different things. Whenever we go through the gospel for this week, then we're going to be debating that at ChristianForums.com. My apologies. I've 
been really, really busy. I haven't been able to get there, but I, I am going to get there before this newsletter is published, number two. And we're going to be, you're going to see the exchange of that. Okay. So, this, and I, I'd like to, when possible, give the full message that Bonnie's giving without chopping it up. I think that's, that's a fair thing to do. And it, it is a, it's a gracious thing to do whenever you're in a debate. Because if you have a weak case, chopping the guy's argument up before you repost it, you know. A lot of people do that to me. So let's just read through it, and then I'm going to answer each point down below. She gives this link right here and says, In the Mystery Explained, is it true that man is in God's image? Why do we give human beings so much credit? when some extraterrestrials are said to be far more intelligent and advanced than human beings on Earth. This is, a, this is a traditional perspective, isn't it, of people. If we're made in God's image, what makes us so great? Okay, next she says, I believe, this is going to boil down to, do you believe in Christianity, in Jesus, and so on? Man is in God's image? Question, question, question. So I really like seeing the question marks. All See all the question marks? Because that means Bonnie is opening up her mind to an answer. Some people go through their whole lives without asking the question. And wisdom begins, oftentimes, with asking the question. That means that there's a space inside. You're not just following a delusion. You're not just following something you've been told or taught by others. You're seeking yourself. You're walking a path. And you're looking behind this and that. Look behind that stone. Turn over that. You're looking for the what the real answer is. That's one thing I really appreciate about Bonnie. The singularity problem. In this instance is simply how human race will experience the new paradigm on Earth. And Dave mentions the paradigm after going to the conference, the Transhumanism Conference. And uh, going to one conference like that should not change your, the, your, the paradigm for you. It shouldn't do that. He was really influenced by it and my and like I already explained, my view is that it's because he has the way that he's defining his terms. And uh first thing you're going to know as far as scripture goes, what's a real singularity? I'm about to show that to you. He's using it in a different way than is used in the mystery explained. If the story of Jesus had lasted two thousand years, how much longer will it last? And then she says, I must add, and Bonnie, when I sent you the first reply, I didn't have, didn't, I didn't answer these. I apologize. I was uh, preparing to go to the dentist. I'm doing this report. I just had two root canals. But I'm not feeling that bad. And I, and I want to get this done today, actually. So because there's so much work, there's, I'm, I'm way behind in my work. And when I wake up tomorrow, I want this to already be done. Okay, so she says, I must add, a more specific subject is transhumanism actually one word and specific example a specific example um, which the Chinese are working on now are two test two babies the Chinese are pushing the envelope every in every direction you, that happens when you have a billion people in your country you have the many horizons everywhere okay? and remember that Chinese people are six-day people six-day people I'll get in, I'll get into more in this, that in a second the elimination of pregnancy in human females. That well, seems kind of strange, doesn't it, for a country that only allows one pregnancy per female. Why would you make it zero? Why would you want to make it zero? Anyway, one more pertinent question. Um, when you are praying, what or to whom are you really praying to? Is that addressed in the Mystery Explained? Yes, it is. And it's also expressed right here. Okay, so first, I'm not going to read to you. These are the comments that I gave to Dave. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Surely you must realize that the term singularity has far more than just one simplified definition. Seemingly created to support a pet peeve doctrine. That's what this is that he inherited from Steve Quayle. He picked it up from him. Now he's running with it. And some could say that you guys, accepting the three witnesses' explanation of Scripture, the doctrine, that you got it from me, now you're running with it, you know, I, I, I see the argument can be used against those who see the mystery explained, who see the truth in the three witnesses, too. Okay, I mean, just being fair. 
using the term using the term in the Christian sense the word this is what I'm trying to explain to uh, today the word is a singularity God is a singularity the earth is a singularity in Genesis 1 1 in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth they are all singularity expressions in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth this wasn't even pulled up before but I just pulled it up now because these diagrams were just used to help Dina last in in the uh, update report it's very important that you realize that this is the most important verse in the whole Bible these words right here God heaven and earth are witnesses of spirit blood and water this is the primer right here for breaking God's true Bible code, bound up in these words right here. In the beginning, God, I mean, everybody can recite this just about. Every, in the beginning, God, the thing to realize is that this heaven right here is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by, was actually the word, the Greek term is through. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Everything in this earth realm was made through him. Who's the word? God, word. When you realize that heaven is the word, the lights start to come on. And then you realize my Father who art in heaven gets his name from Genesis 1.1. Make that connection. Make that connection right now and everything's going to be much simpler. Because Bonnie's about to ask another question. Well, she asks who you pray to. We pray to God. But you don't just pray directly to God. You can't. There's no way here that you can pray directly to God if you're a seventh-day member of Christ's body. You can't do it. You're, look, you're within the realm of time and space. Heaven in the highest heaven can't contain God. He's infinite. How are you going to talk to God? Well, there's things that God had to make a provision for you. And what he had to do was, he had to sacrifice his word. The heaven of Genesis 1-1, the highest heaven, that David and Solomon know about, that I know about, that you need to know about, this highest heaven had to be broken, had to be sacrificed, because this was broken. Whenever God made everything in the beginning, the earth that was created, you cannot see anymore. It was one thing. There were no such thing as men. There were no such thing as women. There were no such thing as angels. Men and women and angels were all the same thing. The next diagram will help you to see what that's about. Let me pull it up for you. It's right here. This is the heaven right here. In the beginning, this is the same verse. God created the heaven and the earth. Well, this wasn't the one. There's a more simplified one that I wanted to show you. That one's a little more complicated. The one that I wanted to show you is this one, actually. This keeps. This is the way the, the book, The Mystery Explained, be, Explained, begins. It begins very simply with overlapping circles, Venn diagrams. Okay? And this is the lateral tabernacle view. This is the tabernacle view of Genesis 1.1. It's just that these, this is the heaven. This is the earth. The earth was made void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light and it was good. The light <laughs> is the word. Okay. But God could not send the Son into the world to save sinners because the Word was a singularity still. This is where the importance of understanding a singularity. This is where it is so important. And you realize that there's no problem with a singularity. There's only a problem in understanding the singularity. Okay? So you got a triune heaven, heaven, heavens, heaven, and earth. Where did this come from? The the earth was made void. 
darkness was upon the face of the deep. You know what that means? It means that the heavens are up here as a circle. And the earth is down here as a circle. There's no such thing as heaven. Heaven is a begotten aspect. It's begotten witness in, Gen in Genesis 1.8. In Genesis 1.2, no such thing as heaven. The waters are above and the waters are below. They're separated. There's no The reason that there's the, the, the face of the deep, the face of the deep, the face of the deep. What is that? What is the face of the deep? The face of the deep is what you get when you take two spheres and then you touch them back together again. It's the, if you're pulling two things apart, and you could hold them in each hand, as they were coming apart, the last place where they were touching would be the face. The first place that they touch when you put them back together again. The face. Okay? So, the face of the deep was put, was created, recreated when heaven was begotten. The very important thing to realize right at the beginning that you have the, the waters above, the waters below. No such thing as heaven yet. When God puts them back together again, there's an overshadowing. This power from on high overshadows the water witness. And heaven is begotten. Luke 1.35, that's the same exact way the Son was begotten. The power from on high was the Father. The Holy Spirit was the water witness. The Son was begotten. See, so when that happened... Luke 1.35, when it happened in the womb of the woman right there, it was a remaking, a redoing, an antitype of this right here. So before Jesus Christ incarnated down here, God had to sacrifice his word up here. What Jesus Christ did down here was a recreation of what had already been done. That's why you see Paul referring to Christ Jesus was sacrificed for us. Christ Jesus, you have to understand the difference between Jesus Christ walking around on the earth and Christ Jesus. This is Christ Jesus right here. The heavenly Adam. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit, soul, body. This is Christ Jesus from the Pauline epistles. Only Paul refers to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Word has Christ Jesus. Nobody else even knows what that means in the New Testament. Only Paul does. Because it's part of the revelation of the mystery. It's not because I'm a Gnostic. It's because the point in time came for me decades ago to see this stuff so I could write it down and show it to you guys. Because, and those of you guys that are sitting watching this, if it's appointed time, you can see it. God's letting you see it. If it's not the appointed time yet, your eyes are just glossing over. You can't see it yet. That's the way it works. I'm praying for you. And you pray for yourself. That God lets you see it. Pray that he cracks that door open. Because what's behind it is a shining bright light. Brighter than the sun. And whenever you see it, it's an amazing thing. Okay. okay. You got a picture of what's going on here? You have a man here. The man of God. This would be the earth, heaven, and God from Genesis 1.1. You just stand it up and you make a man out of it. You lay it this way and it's a tabernacle form. Now that point is, is, lay, is laid out in the mystery explained right from the beginning in the terminologies. When you see any diagram of three witnesses this way, it's in, it's in uh, tabernacle form. Whenever you see him stood up this way, it's in man form. Soul, soul, spirit, body. So if, you're, if this is the tabernacle of Moses, you see this veil here? See this veil? There's a first veil and a second veil. Holy of Holies. Holy place. Court. And there's changes made to it. This veil is moved out here. Until the Reformation. Okay. Then we'll get, then we'll get to the, uh, the next diagram. Okay, so do you see singularities as a problem now? When you realize God, the Word, and Earth are singularities, and that they're broken down into their trinities. Is Trinity a bad word? People say, well, it's not in the Bible. Yeah, but trinities are in Genesis 1-1. God, heaven, and earth. And they're throughout the whole Bible. Even the Bible itself is laid out in the exact pattern that I just showed you. Okay. So that's pretty much what I'm trying to explain right here. Many people do not realize that God has his own three witnesses. Some of you guys watching this video right now, you're thinking, uh... The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's God. And you know what? 
you're wrong. That is idolatry. Heaven, my father who art in heaven, got his name from heaven of Genesis 1.1. God created heaven. Heaven is created. The earth is created. God and his word are one right now. I hate to tell you. God and his word are one in the infinite realm right now. And you're there too. And I'm there too. What's happening in the heaven and in the earth is happening over and over and over again to recreate things already done in the infinite realm. Period. How are you going to pray to God? You're going to pray to God in the infinite realm. He's infinite. He's in the infinite realm. How, how is a finite being you're going to do that? Through his son, who is an almost infinite being. Heaven, the word. You pay, pray to God through the word. The word is incarnate in you, and God is incarnate in him, in you. Okay, all I showed you was the outer part. We're going to get to the inward part here in just a second. So that's why I'm showing you. I mean, if you get the newsletter, or if you want to stop this and read every word, you can read the commentary that I shared with Dave first, before I ever started writing to Bonnie. But I wanted Bonnie to have the benefit of what I shared with Dave first. So then she says, is it, is it, is it true that man is in the image of God? Yes. And Dave is going to make a statement in his video that only man is made in the image of God. That's not true. All things are made. It's exactly the opposite. All things are made in the triune image. In this line, this is only one chart from the Mystery Explained. God's essence. The realms. God's infinite realm. The realm of the word. Adam at creation. That's what I just showed you. The infinite realm. God who is to come. God who is. God who was. Those are the three witnesses of God. Where are they? Did I pull that one up for you? I pulled some of these up. Revelation 1. Let me just read it for you. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the same as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, for guess who? The Word. The Word is the Son of God. The Almighty is the God who sent the Son of God, right? I'm kind of smiling about that because some people, they have an epiphany right at this moment. Then they realize, holy mackerels, I've been thinking that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit were God all this time. And it's really, they're, they're right here. Okay? So where do, when, it, the, when people go back to Genesis 1, this is where they get the wrong impression. Genesis 1, 26. They read this. This is how a misinterpretation could get you all messed up. Then God said, and this God, I'm about to tell you who it is. Let us, see he's saying us here, make man in our image. And there's all kinds of different interpretations about this, right? But there's only one truth, and I'm about to share it with you. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky. Cattle, every creeping thing that's on the earth, and God created man in his own image. Well, what does the image of God look like? I just explained it to you, and I'm going to show you. This is from the book, The Mystery Explained. The Almighty. God who is, God who was, and God who is to come. They each have the characteristics. You cannot approach a lion in front. He's going to eat you alive. You cannot approach a bull from behind. This guy is the prophet. This is the guy, God to come, who sees all things in the future. God who was, all things in the past. God who is, he sees every single thing in creation, in heaven, in the infinite realm that's happening at this very instant. God to come is his prophet. God who was is his intercessor. Well, I shouldn't say his, his intercessor. He's the intercessor for everybody else coming to him. That's the priest. That's the prophet. Sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? But that's the truth, and that's, that's what's going to set you free. I'm going to say that to Bonnie here in just a minute. That's the part that's going to set you free when you realize these are the three witnesses of God. 
and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are the three witnesses of the Word. Heavens, heaven, and earth are the three witnesses of this earth creation that was broken. So Genesis 1.1, all of this is about reconstituting a previously existing broken universe. The Big Bang does not describe creation being made. It doesn't describe creation being made. It describes a previously a previous creation that was destroyed. There were no such things as angels in this perfect earth. There were no such thing as men, no such thing as women. They were all the same thing. When the heavens and the heaven and the earth were created, that changed everything. Now the angel's abode is in the heavens and the human being, men, their abode is in the earth. When you take the angel, when you take the woman, put them back inside the man, you put the man back inside the angel, you have an immortal soul that lives, guess where? In heaven. That's the way it works. So you have a, a, a spiritual um, counterpart. You have a spiritual half. That spiritual half's not walking around on the earth with you, though. That spiritual half is in the heavens. It's a greater part of you. It's the angel. It's mighty. It has its nose pressed against the veil, looking over through heaven into this earthbound realm where his other half is. You are like his bride. You're the you're like the woman. He's like the man. Becoming immortal again means joining that angel half and that man half. That's what it means. As crazy as it sounds, that's what I'm telling you. The truth is stranger than fiction. You can't even make this stuff up. The only way that these things were revealed to me is through the three witnesses that I'm trying to help you see. Spirit, blood, and water. Once you see them, they begin testifying. All the witnesses. See that chart that I just showed you? All those witnesses are testifying inside of me right now. Re having read the Bible numerous times, the New Testament more than a hundred times, knowing their testimony and having, I mean, not a photographic memory, but really darn close. Being able to bring these things to my remembrance, knowing what these witnesses are saying, helps me to hear the angel song coming from the text. The Word. Okay. So let me get back over here. I mean, you can go through the word, faith, wisdom, and knowledge. Faith is the seed. The shoot grows, the knowledge, and then the fruit is wisdom. And guess where the next generation of seeds come from? Right here. This is the fruit, the wisdom part. The fall, angels, man, and woman. There's not supposed to be. There are now, because these are the heavens realm. This is what came out of man. And people wonder, well, how in the world did woman come out of the side of man? That's the story of Adam and Eve, isn't it? Precisely what happened. The woman has to go back inside. The man has to go back inside the angel to be a mortal soul. There's going to be a time in the future when there are no more angels and there are no more men. Only immortal souls are going to walk an earth that is like heaven. Creation has to be made many, many times. There's going to be a time when there's no more birds of the air, no more fish of the sea either. Everything in these lines is going to disappear. This line right here, this column, I should say, testifies for the original singularity. So is singularity a problem now? I don't think so. The Word, the Son, well, this is not the Word of God, but the Word, that's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, eventually the Father. Why do you think the Father gives all authority to judge to the Son? Why would he do that? Because the father, there's going to be a time when the Father does not exist anymore. The Son, whenever fully evolved, fully grown, the, the, the Father half on the top, the Holy Spirit part on the bottom is going to disappear and be absorbed into the Word. So the Word's at the beginning, the Word's at the end. He's the beginning, the Alpha and Omega too. The Word at the beginning and the Word at the end. In, it's in between that He's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that Paul calls Christ Jesus. It's temporal. All of these witnesses are temporary until this becomes a singularity again, and then his name will be this. That's the way it works. Okay? So why do human beings, why give human beings so much credit when some extraterrestrials are said to be far more intelligent and advanced? The surprising thing that people are going to learn is that the ETs, if you read Second Kings, 
Well, I, I should just pull it up. Um, this is, video is going to get too long. Second Kings chapter 10. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Second Kings chapter 2, 10 and 11. When Elijah is taken up by the chariots of fire, the chariot of fire comes down. He gets in and goes, where do you think they go? They go to heaven. Who do you think? You think it was Israelites or Amalekites or Hittites driving the chariots of fire? No. It's these people that you're talking about. These ETs. Except for, guess what? They're not ETs. They're from here. This place has been around for a long, long time. God's been in the creator business for an infinite amount of time. There were amphibious races before there were reptilian races. People talk about the reptilians. The reptilians, the reptilians. What about the amphibious races? They existed long before the reptilian races were ever even thought of. And they've been here for millions and millions and millions of years. Then comes the reptilian races. Now the mammalian races. Just now. So who do you think is driving this? Who, the sons from space. The sons from space are still sons of Adam. That's the key. He's the one that gave them instructions and the reason they don't destroy this planet. Yes, they are far advanced. They could destroy this planet with one photon torpedo if you're a Trekkie. One. But they are custodians. They're working with God. They're working with Adam. With Elijah. With Moses. Working with them. It's a thing to realize. They are far superior. They are six-day people. Six-day people. I, I said I was going to talk a bit more on that. The Chinese. The Aborigine peoples. There are ancient peoples that have been on this planet. You think that this all started six, 7,000 years ago? Come on. They have fossils of people millions of years old right now. They've been here that long. And the longer than the oldest that you've seen for mammals, longer. They've been here a lot longer than that. Okay, so they're the ones that are going to clean up. Whenever the Black Star comes, the Black Star came in the days of Noah. It came in the day of Moses. It's coming to start the day of the Lord for the prophet of Acts 3, start at verse 19, to get to 26. He's coming to restore all things. That's the last two verses of the Old Testament. Elijah is coming to restore the hearts of the father's two children, which means innocence. He's bringing innocence back to people. He's going to restore the hearts of the children to their fathers, which is um, immortality. People are going to live to be more than a thousand years old after the black star comes again. Elijah's going to be on the earth, but you see Satan's going to be chained. We're The ones that are about to be taken are going to be seating, seating in those vacated heavenly seats, helping Elijah for the next 3,600 years till the black star comes again. Who do you think is going to clean everything up? These, these ETs. We're going through a mystery period right now that the prophets never saw. So people think that we're going to, um, the Bible's going to come alive. And you're going to be able to read about what's happening today. It's never going to happen, not in our time. Because we're living in a mystery period that the prophets were never allowed to see. Peter, John, and James can't see it. Only Paul sees it. The reason is because God gave it to Paul through Christ, our risen Lord. Nobody else was allowed to see it. He's the steward of the dispensation of God's grace. So we're not giving humans any more credit than we are the ETs. The difference is, is that the ETs, the Aborigines, the Chinese, the Chinese are... RH positive exclusive. Their blood is all the same and it has the Reese monkey gene in it. Just like every American Indian, just like every Aborigine people, there are races on this planet that are 100% RH positive exclusive. These are the ones that are the ancient races. They've been here a long time. They're cousins to the sons from space. Amphibian, reptilian, mammalian. That's the way it works. These, these older races, they've been here for a very long time. They are part of the program. They are working their fellow workers with God. They're not bad guys. People want to talk about the Anunnaki. They're coming to destroy this and that. Come on, give me a break. If any of these superior races want to destroy this entire solar system, they could do that. This is God's little spot where Christ was born as a man, although he is 
no DNA taken from, e, uh, uh, from Mary, none taken from Joseph, conceived of the Holy Spirit, Matthew 1, 18 and 20. No D, if he had any DNA from either mother, Mary or Joseph, he would need redemption like everybody else. Okay. So he's literally from above, from heaven above. John the Baptist is the earth incarnate in a man. Heaven incarnate in a man is the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Heaven and earth, the same two witnesses that I just told you that were singularities, they incarnate oh, onto the earth over and over and over again. Everybody else comes here one time per age. Okay, so there's no singularity problem. He's adopted a self-serving definition of singularity. That's one thing that I noticed that in my debates, been debating people about these things since they invented the Internet. I'm kind of old, 62, about to be 62. Before they invented the Internet, I'm sitting in London in the 80s, in the, uh, and I'm writing. Dr. Clifford Denton, I mentioned it before, there's no such thing as the Internet. We're, all, we're, we're using the post office. And then they invented the Internet and made things a lot easier. So there's no singularity problem. He's, he's adopting a definition of a term that is incorrect. And it's a little bit misguided because of, my, this is my opinion now, of what he learned from Steve Quayle about this transhumanism. He's making applications with his uh, carbon-based life form and machines, it's carbon and iron more than it's carbon and silicon. Just because it has silicon chipsets in it doesn't make it a silicon life form. Those do exist out in the cosmos. They're not here. Other than the one that I have in my gut, the strongest feeling that is uh, it's in the underground um, city connected to the Denver airport. That's what's running a threat assessment contingency planning for the House of Rothschild. That's what's keeping tabs on us right now. It's an artificial life form. It's not something that men made. Thing is, Rothschild don't even know what they got from the aliens. They don't realize that it's a life form. It's like a kidnapped life form. But there are entire worlds out there comprised of silicon-based life forms, like their carbon-based life forms here. Okay. So then, uh, so I'm going to make that argument right here. Genesis one one. The previous existing universe, the earth of Genesis 1-1, was destroyed. That's the Big Bang. Not the creation, the destruction. Genesis, the rest of Genesis 1-1 is God, literally God, through his word, reconstituting everything. Then God rests. Just read the scriptures in Genesis 2, 1 through 3, God finally rests. But then the Lord God starts working. Yahweh Elohim. And that's the Word incarnate, who is the Lamb of God that does that creates Adam from the dust of the ground. The breath of uh, the breath of life is from the heavens. The dust of the ground is from the earth. And Adam is made into a living soul to live in guess where heaven. Everything from Genesis 2:7 to Genesis 3:21 takes place in heaven. Heaven. It's only when they're given human skins. Genesis 3:21, that it, there's no incarnate, there's no uh, reproduction in heaven. It do doesn't exist. It doesn't even make any sense in heaven. When you get there, you'll see what I mean. But in this world, it does. You have men and women procreation. That's where Adam and Eve were first earthbound hosts. Genesis 3:21, that's his most recent incarnation. But Adam has incarnated before for the amphibious races. For the reptilian races, he continues to do this over and over and over again. The most recent incarnation is Genesis 3.21. And that's what happened 7, 8, 9. Well, some people think 12,000 years ago, 7,000 years ago. Whatever you believe. Whatever you want to believe. Okay, so then we're going to define transhumanism. And I had to go. The, the wiki was a little was a little off in my view. I went to uh, the encyclopedia. A little older version. Wiki kind of spices things up. Kind of like Steve Quayle and Dave Hodges do. It's uh, transhumanism. Social, uh, philosophical movement. That's what it is, a movement. 
There are movements in physics. There are movements in, in astrophysics. This is more philosophy devoted to promoting in the research and development of robust human enhanced technologies such as techno such technologies would augment or increase human sensory perception, evolve um, emotive ability. So it's kind of like Jason Bourne, if you know the series. You know, in enhancing human beings. The thing is, an extended lifespans. So we are a degraded version of a human being. We don't live to be more than a thousand years like in the Old Testament, right? This is going to come back again. There's a reason that the time is shortened now. We don't want to drag this out and live a thousand years during this mystery period. We want the entire mystery period to be only two thousand years. And it has to be, everybody has to come and incarnate. That has to incarnate through this period. God had to shorten it to two thousand years for it to work. Then it's going to go back and be a thousand years again. Some people living just after the Black Star gets here. Some people resurrected when the Black Star gets here are going to live to the end of the age, 3,600 years later. Okay, so my view is Dave is caught up in, in uh, Steve Quayle's InfoWars and others. I mean, there's more here. The rendition of trans, uh, transhumanism and hybrid movement coming soon to a conference center near you. This is uh, their interpretation. Like I have mine, they have theirs. They see this as a God-Satan thing. Satan cannot compete with God. Satan is a created being. He can't create. All we're doing is redoing things already done. That's important to realize. Ecclesiastes 1, 9 to 11. We're doing things already done. We're just nothing new happening here. There's no free choice here. That's going to make some people angry. But it's true. You made your choice in the infinite realm where you're a God. You either serve with Satan in the rebellion or you're a victim like me. And we're here redoing over and over again. In my view, that's part of the reason I was misused by this dentist. That's why she was almost she almost killed me. They had to pull six teeth out of my head. This new dentist. And I didn't even know what was happening. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Because I trusted the dentist. That they were doing the right thing. But my trust was put in the wrong place, wasn't it? And I suffered for years because of it. It made my work suffer too. So these are... But these are the things the way they happened in the infinite realm when we were gods there in the aftermath of the satanic rebellion and going through the satanic rebellion. Okay. So, I and I just say, I make a little statement here. I am far more interested in reading and interpreting the substance of God's word correctly and sharing God's wisdom hidden in plain sight with others. That's, that's where this presentation is going. In other words, this trans... Humanism thing, this is a rabbit hole that will drag you under and suffocate you. You will never return. You'll be going to conferences and conferences about Satan's doing this out in the cosmos. And, and you, you'll never be able to be brought back to reason. That happens to researchers in my groups. It happens. They get caught up with this or that or the other thing. They get sucked in. They're done. This is overwhelming. They cannot come back from the rabbit hole. And uh, Bonnie is, is uh, a rabbit hole. She's the rabbit hole digger king. But she is able to, she listens. And I say, uh, Bonnie, <laughs> you're getting a little, you know, you're going over the edge here. And sometimes she gets kind of, she's getting lured away. But then she comes back, she gets snapped back into place. Okay, so um, first, um, wait a minute. Oh, then she says, um, one more pertinent question. When you are praying... What are, or to whom are you really playing to? Is this addressed in the mystery explained? Yes, it is. But first, we have to give you some context. Because the thing to realize here is there's more than one dispensation on the earth. Some people think that there are only uh, two dispensations, or three, or seven, or eight. There are thousands and thousands of dispensations. God doesn't deal with every group of people different, uh, the same way. He has relationships with the amphibious races, and he had them. Millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of years ago. And the reptilian races and the now what's the six day people, the Chinese people. The Chinese people don't pray through Christ. The Aborigine people don't pray through Christ. They pray directly to God, directly. That's what Genesis 1 1 says. God told them to be fruitful and multiply. They're doing exactly what God told them. They whenever they pray, their prayers go straight to God. They don't need an intercessor. 
But you and I are different if you are a seventh-day person, part of Adam's recent incarnation. We are a god from God's infinite realm. These six-day people, the amphibious races, the Chinese, the Aborigines, they were members of Adam's body on the day that Adam was made by God in the infinite realm. That's why they have been here for so long. The thing is, in the infinite realm, there are other gods that God made like Adam, with members in their body too, by the way. But then whenever, for example, let's use uh, Bonnie as an example, member of Christ's body. Or we can use uh, um, John, that I was just mentioning before, member of Christ's body. He's a god in God's infinite realm, like Bonnie is, like David is, member here. Okay? They incarnated inside of me, and I incarnated inside of them. That's what gods do in the infinite realm. Now, when I incarnate inside of, of uh, Bonnie, she puts me in a certain position, around a giant table inside of a giant hall in the center of her in infinite self. So she puts me either on her right hand or on her left hand. And if she's smart, just my opinion, of course I have a biased opinion, and she's going to place me right at her right hand. And then she's going to be able to use the things that I'm saying and teaching and showing right at her right hand disposal. The way that we position our brethren inside of us changes our outward appearance. So even though we're all made perfect, we're all made infinite. We have a different outward appearance because our brethren incarnate inside of us and we arrange them differently. And that shows up in our rewards and our brethren, our fellow infinite gods, see us that way. That's what gives us our personality, our character. Some of us are going to put certain personality types right or right hand and eliminate others. You see what I mean? The way that we do that is what makes us individuals in the infinite room. Otherwise, we would all be exactly, exactly the same. And we're not the same. We're very, very different. Okay? So, we have to give context to this. Now, this is answer. There's not one answer for everybody. This is the answer for the members of Christ's body. Those of you that obeyed our gospel, Paul's gospel, gospel number two from the, the uh, previous video, we put our faith, right, in God. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us and, and he paid for our sins. And God raised him on the third day, in fulfillment of the scriptures, and seated him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus and us with him. Our redemption is in Christ through his shed blood. That's the gospel. You believe, the Holy Spirit in me gives you the, the faith of Jesus. It's a, it's a physical possession. Well, I should say a spiritual possession, but it's something literally given to you. And it's with that faith of Jesus. It's Romans chapter 3, verse 26, when you dive into the Greek. The faith of Jesus is what we, it's just, that's what's transferred. And then you remember Christ's body. It changes everything. You get baptized into Christ's body on the cross 2,000 years ago. God, you died with him. Once you're dead, God judges you. You only die once. Now, I've been raised from the dead. I'm seated in heavenly places. Done. Finished. I can only be judged once. Right? My sins were put on Christ. So I don't go and sin because, I can, you know, because I'm at liberty to, because my sins were put on Christ. No, I don't want to. I want to be good. I want to help you guys. Rather than being out the bar, I'm sitting here with you right now. I've got this, this right here going on to help you. And whenever you realize that's what the truth is, then you're going to feel the same way. You're going to want to spend time with other Christians that Christ died for. You want to share information so that you can see things better because God gives me part and he gives you part and he gives Bonnie part and he gives David part. And we all come together and we all testify and our voices are lifted up to become just like the angel song coming from the text. And we hear one another and then we're able to see it. All one thing and realize that we're all members of one another. It's really a great, great thing. It's really a great thing. And that's one of the reasons that I want to say I'm not I'm not uh, condemning Dave or Steve Quayle. We're all members of one another. All of us are. There are things that I'm going to have to learn from them later in the timeline. Maybe things I can learn from them right now. That doesn't mean they're right about everything. And it doesn't mean I'm right about everything either. So test me. Because I'm darn sure going to test you. Right? You test me. 
and then we're going to compare it to what God's Word says and see if it's true or not. That's the process. Okay, so there, here, here are a few examples where uh, we can learn by example, just by reading the Pauline epistles. His first letter to the Romans, Paul felt like if he could win the Romans over, he could run over. This was the leader of the world in his day. There, where, where Paul lived was occupied by Romans. Where Paul lived, they had horns blowing off to, sing, to signal the guard changes. In Jerusalem, whenever it talked about the cock crew, that's talking about the horns that were being blown to, because of the changing of the guard. The guards were being changed all the time. This, these people were under oppression by the Romans. And Paul felt like that if he could win the Romans over, he could win over the whole world. The, that's why Romans is the most important book that you're going to read as a brand new Christian. As you grow up and the body of Christ, as Christ grows inside of you, your new nature, then later on it'll become Ephesians, it'll become Colossians, it'll become the pastoral epistles more, you know, first to second Timothy and things. But at the beginning, Romans is the most important book. It really is. And this is where what he says. He says, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, because your faith is being proclaimed through the whole world. And this is the answer. You pray to God through Christ. If you're praying to Christ, then you're taking God out of the equation and you're making Jesus Christ into an idol. Don't want to do that. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the Word walking around. You pray, and He is, is uh, the one that God sent to save you. But you don't worship the Son He sent as God. People want to argue with me about Jesus as God. Uh, he proclaimed to be the Son of God. Now, either He is the Son of God or He's a liar. That's John chapter 10. Read 34 through 36, and you'll see it. He says, why are you throwing rocks at me? Because I'm the... I said, I told you I'm the Son of God. And you're God's. He, what He's saying is, I'm just an incarnation. God and His Word are one and the same. God's Word is far, far, far more powerful than all of us combined. But in this creation, He's an incarnation, sent here as the Son of God to save us. Even though we're gods and He's the Son of God. You see what I mean? We're gods in the infinite realm, but we're just mere men here. But He's given us some perspective. This is what He says up here. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Always, always, always pray to God. He's the guy that made you. He created you through His Word. Now you're going to pray to your Creator through the Word that He created you with. And that's our Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray to God, the Almighty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, our intercessor, and our one mediator between God and men. I pulled some of this up for you, and then I'm going to let you go. Pulled up, uh, let's see what I... Oh, this is Romans 5. I didn't have that other one. Didn't have that one pulled up. Oh yeah, this is where uh, this is where you see the three witnesses of God. And there's Genesis one. I showed you the quail. That's really all I wanted to I wanted to share with you. What was pulled up? I have some more diagrams that I can go over with you briefly. I showed you that one. Let's see which one we want to go to. Let's go to this one. This is a little more it's simple. This is the tabernacle. Of Moses and the temple. See the ark, holy of holies. That's the spirit of the tabernacle, the spirit of the temple. The holy place. The holy place is interesting because it's been given a double portion. It made twice as big, and this section has been put outside because the Holy Spirit is in the world. So the priests, before they can go in here, they have to wash in that labor of water. This is a water witness. This is the blood witness. This is where the blood is sprinkled on this golden altar of incense right here. One time a year, the priest goes through the Day of Atonement. This is what happened to Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. He was chosen to go in here. This is in the fall. And they tie a, a rope to the leg, and he goes behind a second veil. And if he's not pure, he goes, he goes around the corner, and then he turns and he, he looks at the ark, and he sees the Holy Spirit between the wings of the cherubim. Magnificent. Whenever Moses would come out from behind that veil, 
His face would be shining bright white just from being standing in front of that spirit. But if you're not ready for it, you're impure, you collapse dead instantly. They drag you out with the rope. And then they, they everybody puts their lot in again. They shake it up, and here we go. We get lot number two, and they send the next guy in. And if he drops dead, they drag him out, and they keep going until they, until they get it right is the way it works. The reason they do it by lot is to make sure everybody's ready. So you have, you're have you going to make sure you do penance. You're going to make sure you make sure every every your conscience is clean. Every single thing is clean. I mean, you're going to brush your teeth. You're going to shine everything just perfect. That day, for the Day of Atonement, if you're a son of Levi and you're, you're the priest, and there's a gigantic bunch of them out there, but every single one of them is trembling in their boots that they're the one going to get picked and have to go behind the veil. Pretty funny, you think about it. But um, this is the altar part, but this is God in Christ in you. Kind of what I wanted to get to. Because whenever you're praying to God, some people think that you're praying into the air. You're not. You're praying inwardly. Your access to the almost infinite realm, heaven, your access to the infinite realm where you're a God is through the incarnation that's in you. It's inside of you. That's what Christ is saying, that heaven is in you. He's telling you that. He was telling Israel that, but you can learn by looking over Israel's shoulder in the four Gospels, right? So this is this is you, your spirit, your body, and your soul that's in red. Then Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, the Son's back there. You just can't see Him. See, it says Christ in you. See, the arrow's red. But then, God was in Christ, reconciled the world to Himself. Whenever we are preaching the gospel, God is inside of me, inside of Christ in me, reconciling you to Himself. That's how it works. So God is inside of Christ in you. This is the infinite realm incarnate. The infinite realm is incarnate in every believer, even though you don't realize it yet. Christ, the entire heaven realm, the entire realm is incarnate in you. And here's a cool part. You're, the faces of your brothers and sisters are on that. If you look inwardly, if you could see it, then you would be looking at a giant, it's like a typewriter ball. Remember in the old days they had the keys then they changed it to the typewriter ball with all the letters on it, all the symbols on it? Well, that is what heaven is like in you. Is it like a typewriter ball? And all your brethren's faces are on it. And in heaven, in the ages, ages to come, we're going to be able to look inwardly and talk to any of our brothers at any time. So if you want to talk about transhumanism, <laughs> Scripture talks about how we, 2 Corinthians was a First Corinthians two sixteen? We have the mind of Christ, like I do. It's not just because I have a high IQ that I can see all these things. It's because I have the man, of, I have the mind of Christ in me, and it's been developed over decades. So when you have the mind of Christ, then you can see, you can see things that other people can't see. So the transhumanism aspect of people transitioning to higher forms, it's happening in front of you right now. I'm a perfect witness to it. But it, that you can have the same thing. It's you just go through and let God's Word become alive in you like it is in me, and you're going to see these things too. You have access to heaven right now inwardly. Your prayers are inwardly through the Word, through the heaven realm, to God who is incarnate in Christ in you. That's the way that it works, and I have my right hand up, I swear. That's the way it works. This is the way that God showed me these things decades ago. There's not anything that I would change in the mystery explained. Nothing. As you're growing in, in the Word, then your views are always changing because you're getting closer and closer to the truth. Once you get there and you see it and it shines in your face like it did with me, then the interpretations do not change after that. They're the same for the rest of your life. Once you are mature and you see it, that's what I would really like to see for you guys that are um, watching this video right now. And this coming Tuesday, we're going to have our first chat room um, together. We did it years ago, this John. And um, we had 235 members back then, 65 administrators. Now, this is starting off to be, and I'm watching Silver, so it looks like it's going back down again. But the... Um, 
the original chat room was just open for a period of time but at, but after a while we we got different administrators people that had retired people people that uh that didn't work moms that stayed home they became administrators and the room stayed open 24 7 all week long and they're showing videos they're getting questions for when i showed up later right right now it's just tuesday nights from seven to nine eastern time and i'm going to be there and john said even if there's only a few members i think we have a, some is seven or ten subscribers now this is how you subscribe now if you just want to be just get these newsletters that i'm showing you 25 dollars a year that's all it is you pay now you don't have to pay again till next year on this date you're going to get all the 2019 newsletters that's only this many till the end of the year but then you're going to get all the 2020 newsletters you don't have to make your next payment till $25 next year on this date this one's just $50 you're going to get the chat room information where to go sign up the password you're going to get everything you're going to be able to come with us every Tuesday night and then when we get enough administrators and we get because I'm this is the way we this John and I did this before then um, the room will stay open longer and then like I was I was t I was um, showing you in this newsletter I'm going to let you go, I promise. Up here at the top. If I can get it to go there. This is 001. And I, it was like uh, 53 minutes long or something. It's me talking about what I'm talking about right now. The first series. Then you're going to see 002, 003. And it's going to be up to like 053 by the time that we're done. So... The idea is that we're leaving a breadcrumb trail. We start off with the two churches. See newsletter number two. This is going to be, and we start off with the two gospels, now the two churches. Then we're going to go to the four baptisms. The difference between God and my Father art in heaven. I alluded to that in this video. Really, really great. You want to increase your heavenly rewards? Rewarded for good works? This is a shortcut to doing that. Very, very inexpensive. It's, it's the for what you pay for a coffee like once a month or something. And so the opportunities here, this is a brand new program. I hope to uh, be calling you out as a new um, supporter this coming Tuesday. And then uh, you will be able to benefit, to reap the benefits as we're going forward. You'll be able to come to the mic and ask your questions. You will be able to write me at the special email address like Bonnie's doing, and I answer your questions and make a video just for you. So I made one for Gina last week, right? I made some for other people. And there's there's a lot of people that are in the Black Star program that wrote me lots of questions on this. I'm thinking of Brian. I'm thinking of uh, a lot of people that have written me lots and lots of questions that they may not be aware that this is going on. So I hope to um, get you in this group, get you guys motivated, and then uh, we can have some really good jam sessions every Tuesday, 7 to 9. Really, really looking forward to it. So thank you guys very much for your support. Appreciate it very, very much. And I'll see you on the next uh, special report. If I don't make another special report, oh, I should be making one for Gina. And then the uh, update report on Tuesday. So thank you guys again. Have um, have a great weekend. And I'll see you on the next um, mystery report.